preacher isn't here, so I guess you're stuck with me. I nominate Carter. I nominate Carter. All right, Carter, are you ready? All right, bummer. All right. Take your Bibles. Turn to Hebrews chapter 12. If I say Romans chapter 12, I meant to write Hebrews because I was doing that the whole time. I was writing the wrong book of the Bible down. So Hebrews chapter 12. All right. We need the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, just ask that you would help tonight. Bless the preaching, Lord. Just pray that you would help me to give to what your people, what you've given to me, and just ask for your touch and ask for your help. And Lord, not my words, but your word be heard. And pray for your presence, dear Lord. We do desire you and desire your help, desire your work. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse number one. Bible says, wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the, saint, the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Verse 3, it says, that halfway through that, it says, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. I want to look at growing weary in our race. It says in verse number one there, the end there, it says, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Sometimes we grow weary in our race. So I want to, with the Lord's help, just kind of preach on this and be an encouragement how not to grow weary in our race. But number one says, wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which just so easily beset us. we got to get rid of our sin, number one. There are sins that beset us, but it says, let us lay aside. It's our job to lay that aside. If we're praying and asking the Lord to take the sin, well, we're, usually it's us holding on to it. He says, let us lay aside. Every sin, or every weight, I'm sorry, and the sin which does so easily beset us. Why does it say every weight and the sin? Sometimes a weight might not be a sin, but it's something that's holding us back. Sometimes there's something in our life that's not necessarily a sin, but it's keeping us from walking with God. It's a weight. It's holding us down weighing us down. If we're going to run our race, we've got to get rid of those weights. It says, wherefore, seeing we are, we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. What is that? That's all. That's chapter 11 that he's talking about, referring back to chapter 11, about the faith of all these people that went down through. The faith of Enoch and the faith of Noah and Abraham and Sarah and Joseph, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, all those people that went before us, they had, they had some rough times in their walk with God. They had some problems. How about Joseph? You know, if anybody had an excuse not to serve God, I guess Joseph did. He got taken as a teenager, sold into slavery, falsely accused. He had some, some hiccups along his race. It says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience 
the race that is set before us. What has God set before us? So we got to get rid of the sin. We got to walk with God. Verse 4, it says, Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. That sin's got to go. If we're going to not grow weary. But secondly, look at verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God, of the throne of God. What did Christ do for us? If we're going to not grow weary, we got to look at Jesus. Look, it says, looking unto Jesus. Keep your eyes on the Lord. You know, Joseph, when he went through his storms of life, he had to have his eyes on the Lord, or he wasn't going to make it through. All these other men that went through, that the Bible mentions about their faith, we've got to keep our eyes on the Lord. If we get our eyes on ourselves, we're going to get discouraged. We get our eyes on our circumstance, we're going to get discouraged. Joseph had plenty of opportunity to get discouraged in the jail, in the dungeon, being falsely accused. We've got to look to Jesus. Look at what? Look at what Christ did for us. Look in verse number three. It says, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. What did Christ go through? What's that contradiction of sinners? For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners. Everywhere the Lord turned during his earthly ministry, he had people fighting against him. He had the Pharisees. He had people that were opposing him, that were contradicting him. He would say one thing, that they would say something else. And finally, they nailed him to a cross. What did the Lord go through for us? What did Christ do? He was, he said, you know, he went on to his own, to Nazareth there, and they rejected him. He said, the prophet's not without honor, save in his own country. He said, we know who you are. We know your brothers and your sisters. What did they do? They contradicted him. They rejected him. What did Christ endure? How about the cross? How about getting beat, whipped, nailed to a cross? Consider what the Lord did for us. Not only that physically, but he had to have the Father turn his back on him. He had to have all our sin placed upon him. You know, to help us not to get weary if we keep our eyes on Jesus and not on our little problems. Because our problems may seem big to us, but in light of eternity, in light of what Christ went through, they're not really all that big. Sure, they seem big. They're big when we're facing them. But if we look at it in light of what the Lord went through, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. Verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. You know, this life's just temporary. You know, praise the Lord for when it began, the author, but praise the Lord when we get to heaven, when it finishes. You know, when we got, the day we got saved was a wonderful day. Day we get to heaven be even one, more wonderful. Day we got saved, we got our sins forgiven. The day we get to heaven, we'll have no more sin. Amen. You know, if we think of what the Lord's done for us, if we keep our eyes on the Lord, all that he went through on the cross for us, all that he went through in paying the penalty for our sin, 
verse 2, it says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Despising the shame, it is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. How did the Lord go through that? For the joy that was set before him. What was that? Fulfilling the Father's will? Making a way for us to be saved? What did Christ do for us? You know, he's worthy. He's holy. He's righteous. Turn over to Revelation chapter 5 for a minute. Hold your place in Hebrews. We'll probably be back. But Revelation chapter 5. Verse number 9. The Bible says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. Out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and thou hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts, and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying, with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. No, worthy is the Lamb. Christ is worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy that we serve him. After all that he did for us, he, he's worthy. What did the Lord do for us? That'll help us if we keep our eyes on him. You know, we're not doing this for, for men. We're not doing, we're not serving the Lord for ourselves. We're doing it for the Lord, and he's worthy. He's worthy. Turn over to Hebrews 13. Verse number five says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what men shall do unto me. Thirdly, we got to be content where God has us. If we're not going to grow weary, we got to be content. It says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. You don't have to turn there, but over in 1 Timothy 6, it says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Are we content where God has us? Are we content where, where the Lord has us? You know, if we're discontented, we're going to get weary pretty quick. We're going to get weary of our circumstances. We're going to get weary of serving the Lord of where the God has us. We're going to be content. It says, here it says, for he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what men shall do unto me. You know, the Lord's given us a promise that he's going to help us. He gives us that promise in his word. Verse 6 says, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. You know, are we relying on God's strength or our own strength? Are we, are we relying on what we can do in our strength? 
Fourthly, we've got to walk in his strength, not our own. It says, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Whose strength are we relying in? Are we trying to do it in our strength? That'll make us weary faster than anything else. Trying to do it in our own strength. Turn over to Isaiah chapter 40. You know, God gives us strength to do what he would have us to do. God gives us the strength that we need when we rely on him. Verse 31, Isaiah 40, verse 31. The Bible says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You know, when we're relying on God's strength, God's strength he, get, he says that we shall run and not be weary. If we're running our race, it's hard work sometimes. But in God's strength, he says we won't be weary. We shall walk and not faint. He gives us the strength to do what he would have us to do. He gives us the strength that we need if we're relying on him. Over in Nehemiah, we don't have to turn there, but Nehemiah 8, 10, it says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. How are we doing with that joy? Are we walking with God? Are we fellowshipping with God? You know, if we don't have the joy of the Lord, that's going to zap some of our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Back over in Hebrews 12, I won't be long tonight. This is just a thought that the Lord gave to me. Hebrews 12. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. How are, we, how are we running our race? Are we running it with patience? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. How are we doing tonight in our race? Are we getting wearied and fainting in our minds? Are we walking in the Lord's strength? Go over Galatians 9. I'm sorry, Galatians 6. Verse number 9. If you found Galatians 9, raise your hand. <laughs> There's no chapter 9 of Galatians. Galatians chapter 6, verse number 9. If you have Galatians chapter 9, I want to look at your Bible. <laughs> verse number 9 of Galatians chapter 6, and it says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season... We shall reap if we faint not. Let's not grow weary in well-doing. Let's not grow weary in serving the Lord. For in due time, mentioned running our race with patience in Hebrews. You know, we don't always see a reward right away. We don't always see the, the fruit of it right away. The Bible says, let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due time, or, or I'm sorry, for in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Keep going for the Lord. Don't get weary. It's not all in vain. Serving the Lord is not in vain. Second Thessalonians. Chapter 3. It 
2 Thessalonians chapter number 3, verse number 13. The Bible says, but ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Keep going for the Lord. Don't get weary. Sometimes it's hard not to get weary serving the Lord. But that paycheck comes in eternity. Keep going for the Lord. You know, we got camp meeting coming up. We got all kinds of stuff. It's a lot, camp meeting's a lot of work. We're going to get tired. But don't get weary serving the Lord. Remember what Christ did for us. He's worthy. Remember what the Lord has done for us. He promises to give us strength. Just remember all that Christ did. Remember what the Lord's done for us and what he's promised us. I know this is kind of short tonight, but... This is what the Lord laid on my heart, just to try to be an encouragement, try to be a blessing. Don't grow weary in our race. So, dear Heavenly Father, just ask that you would help us tonight, go before us. Lord, just ask that you would allow us to be a blessing to someone tonight and help us to keep our eyes on you, Lord, and keep looking to you. Go before us now. We do ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen.